Hello? Hello, everyone. Today we will continue to look at the Hong Mao Certified Engineer Question Bank. Next, let's look at question five. Like, the content of question five is actually a continuation of the previous question because we previously touched upon the topic um, of collections. Uh, previously, actually, uh, it was mentioned during the creation. Uh, here actually is just, this question is mainly about configuring the setup. We are setting up an offline installation environment for the Ansible collection, installing three collection packages from the specified three HP languages to verify the installation status and module functionality of our collection. This is the main purpose and goal of this question. The requirements are actually just the three I mentioned earlier. Here it mainly involves, well, us. By using the offline installation method, we deploy our collection into, well, our environment. That's the content here. So first, our directory. Where is it? Previously, we placed it in one of our directories. Under the Greg directory, in the subdirectory of the Greg user, we have a directory. But in the Anthony directory, we will have such a directory, which is our my collection. This is what the task requires, and it's what we need to create later. So first, let's take a look at this. The basic situation. OK, after we enter our Greg user environment, let's see where we are currently located. We are actually in the Greg directory under home. In this directory, we will have our files, and we can directly switch into it. Inside, there will be some files uh, uh, from the previous tasks, as well as other configuration files, etc. the host inventory file. Currently, there isn't a my collection here yet, a directory, right? So what do we need here? Well, we need to create it first, but we don't need to create it directly. Next, we will use a command to install our collection, yo. And at that time, we can specify an installation or deployment directory. At that time, we can directly install it under this directory. So actually, we don't need to create the directory ourselves. In a moment, we can just install it directly. The main requirement in the task here is actually to provide three, what, three compressed packages. There are a total of three compressed packages, and the paths for these three compressed packages are actually the same. Um, they are all under the same path, all within our classroom. Here, it looks like a domain name, but actually, classroom is the environment of a virtual machine that we started earlier, if you remember. In the virtual machine, there is one called classroom. So here, what do we do first? As for the directory structure, it's under home grag inside Ansible My Collection. Ultimately, we need to install it in this directory, so just make sure not to specify the wrong directory in the end. Well, here. We will first directly edit our YML file to install the content of a collection through the YML file. First, let's open it. Let's edit it. And here, we will edit one. A YML file, and then write our three parts into it. All of them. Here, we first press Enter to get into the file. Uh... And then the next step is to write this content into it. How do we write it? It's through our first ed collections. The syntax here is still the syntax of a normal file, but the format here will be slightly different. Previously, in the few delivery files we wrote, this format never appeared. This format is mainly the format of an installation file for our collection. Here we first use a colon, indent, and then here we start writing our specific uh, path. Ah, oh, it's like, where is our installation package located? Where is it placed? Actually, we don't need to extract these installation packages, nor do we need to perform any specific operations. We just need to take it out, we specify the path, and tell our MIDI system, hey, the installation package is here. Please help me install it later. That's the situation here. So first, we, the first name, actually here we only need to write it once. Basically you just write this path once. After writing the path once, you can simply copy the path above, right? Just change the last name at the end. So here, let's write this path. Ah, at this point, all three are the same. All three are the same. So you can copy it here. Ah, at this point you can copy it. Here, when you copy, be careful about spaces or indentation issues. If your spaces or indentation are incorrect, like I just did, the result after copying might not be ideal. 
here we copy from here to there and after copying don't paste directly after pressing enter we should delete the previous indentation before pasting okay here we have three and then we just need to fill in the names at the back be careful not to write the names incorrectly because if the names are wrong during the installation process it won't be able to find what it needs like the required installation package or the installation location if it can't find them the installation will fail and an error will occur so make sure to write all these names correctly the names are indeed quite long and don't follow any rules they are just a combination of a software package and a package number ah version finally add t2.gz then here let's take a look at the second software package As for the second federation, we mainly need to pay attention to the version issue. Make sure not to write the version number incorrectly here. Okay, after writing this, the third one, uh, next is the third one. Three, this one here is the longest one, the longest one. Here is our system rule. Red Hat to hell system. Sai. Everyone needs to pay attention here. Pay attention to the underscore. Make sure to notice the underscore. Here we have two dashes. The one in front is a normal dash. The two at the back are underscores. All underscores. Then here, after we finish writing these, actually the content in front Right is all copied in English. Mainly check if the names of the software packages at the back are correct. Right. If any are written incorrectly, make sure to correct them promptly, especially this one at the back. Hey, our version number. Here it has dashes. Right, dots, and underscores. Make sure to see clearly. See clearly. Okay, after we finish writing here, next we can. What can we do? Here. System, okay, like. After filling it out without any issues, uh, we then save and exit. Ah, uh, this is where we first will tell ourselves through the file what we need to install. Then next, it's through what? Through commands, which is our. Just now, uh, here we choose what to install through commands. Ah, uh, to install one of our collection. Here there are a few options. First, R specifies what specifies the dependency file and through this file we install which is the file we just wrote. Second, P specifies what specifies our installation path. This is a custom installation path. We specify it ourselves directly using the one under home. My collection. Ah, my collection. All right, here, we will execute it. Let's take a look at this. Hmm. Made a mistake. Let's check the error here. Options here, first of all. The Anzibo. Command is fine. Oh, right. Here we are missing something. Oh, missing a keyword, which is our installation install looking for an installation is the installation of a collection so here we will use ansible to install the three collections we need it will download them here and once downloaded we can proceed with the deployment normally hmm and here what happened an error occurred right it says it can't find this collection so why can't it be found Let's take a look at its name. What should we mainly check? Mainly check the path. Ah, is the path correct and normal? What we specify after name actually starts from HP, right? Well, there's no problem with classroom. Ah, uh, there's a mistake with a letter here, right? Okay, let's change this. Ah, 
here. Basically, there are no format issues with this problem, right? We just have four lines in total, and the main thing is to ensure that each word and letter in every line is correct. Then we can proceed to execute the installation again. Hey, here. First it downloads these packages, and then after downloading, it starts the installation, which is successful, right? The information about the packages below, right? They have been successfully installed. And after the successful installation, there are no issues. This problem is then concluded. And as for verification, there's no need for any verification because of this problem, right? Hmm, because for this problem, as long as you have successfully how installed it, it's finished. Uh, here, let's take a look at the command, shall we? Ah, here we can see. This is the basic situation of our collection. This is the basic situation of our collection. Just now, which one did we install? This one, right? Then there's this one, the first. Second and third are all there, right? Yes, they are all there. This is us. Also, look at the path behind. Pay attention to the path, you see. Home, right? The three paths are different from the ones above. So this is a collection that is already there by default. You see its path is the user lab directory. Ah, this is a default directory. Then look at these two below. These three below are the ones we installed ourselves. Just look at this path. It's the path we specified ourselves. Here, if you can see it here, right? If it's installed correctly, actually, the previous successful installation command already represents the correctness of this task. This task doesn't really have much that needs to be verified. Once it's installed, that's it. Later on, we will, right? Later on, we will use some of this. Some related commands. Here, we just need to have it installed. Hmm, and here there's one more thing. Let's exit first. Ah, after exiting. Of course, we have one more thing. You can also check our documentation. Checking the documentation is done through. You see. Here we just recently and successfully installed one right here in this location. A collection, right? We just installed a collection. And here, we can use the answer command to check the basic situation here. Uh, this is essentially its help documentation. Essentially the documentation like for the community general system. Uh, this is the one we just mentioned. Um, the second one, right? The second one, the document for community, um, if you can see it, then there's no problem. You can press Q to exit this screen. Once verified, this is, well, our fifth question. This is a basic situation. For this question, there isn't much to pay attention to. The syntax is very simple. The main thing is to ensure that you write the names of the three packages correctly. However, if you do make a mistake, it will give you an error when you execute it, telling you, hey, I can't find this path, and you'll need to go back and correct the path. Once you correct the path, as long as you ensure that all three packages are successfully installed, you can actually skip the verification for this question. The two verification steps I just did are optional. As long as the installation is successful, the task is complete. It's all about the installation. If you see that the installation was successful, then it definitely was successful. Of course, one thing to note is uh, uh, when you check, what are we mainly checking? You can check if your installation path is correct. If the path is correct, then there are basically no issues. For verification, actually using the first command is enough. You can just check if your installation path is correct. If the path is fine and all three are installed, then this concludes the fifth question. This is the content of our fifth question. It's just a simple installation without any configuration. So overall, it's relatively simple. If you need the complete question bank, you can leave a comment below and purchase the most stable question bank at the best price. That's it for today, everyone. Goodbye.